Good day everyone, it's Duncan from Overland Journals. Welcome to another episode of Subscribers Rig Rundown. And in today's video, we've got a subscriber all the way from Melbourne with his Touring 80 Series. Welcome back everyone. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscription button and the notification bell because my channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community and I bring out a video every single week. At the end of this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others. If you've got questions or comments, leave them below. Now a few things to get out of the way before we dive into the video. If you find my content useful or of value to you and you'd like to try and help me out, please head on over to my Patreons page, link in the description below, and buy me a cup of coffee. You get certain benefits for being a Patreon supporter, so go check the page out. Also, on my website, overland-journals.com, I have a community content-driven forum. It's a free sign-up, but there's a whole heap of information sharing going on there. If you've got questions, you can ask, and community members will try and help you out. So head on over to the forum. It's a free sign-up. Okay, so today's video, I have to make a confession. Today we're keeping it all within the family because this subscriber in Melbourne is my brother-in-law. He bought this 80 series stock standard and he turned it into a beast of a touring machine. He loves touring Australia, he's done a whole heap of travels and um, all in this 80 series. So let's dive into it and has start a chat with him and he's gonna take us all through the vehicle and show us what he's put into it. All right, everyone, we got my brother-in-law's hustler on the other end over in Melbourne. So as I said, there's a confession. This today's uh, episode is all within the family. Now, behind him, as you can see, is his 80 series, a beast of a machine he's built for touring. And he took it, I'm going to flash some pictures quickly. So he took it from a stock standard 80 series, which was this one here. And then he turned it into what it is now. And that's the vehicle we're going to talk about. Hasala, hi Daniel. His... How are you? <laughs> Good, thank you. And uh, yeah, this, fe this feels a bit weird because we are brother-in-law, so we, we talk all the time. But all of a sudden, I'm interviewing him, so it feels a bit weird. So bear with us, everyone. All right, so uh, let's go and do the um, introduction on the vehicle. So if you can just give us a brief intro of your vehicle, make, model, and uh, what type of motor it's got in it. Yep, go for it. All right. Hi everyone. Um, so it is a 1991 uh, built Land Cruiser uh, 80 series. One HDT it has a one HDT engine, uh, factory turbo diesel. Um, I bought it about well, four years ago, four or five years ago. Or so stock standard, as you as you saw on that picture. And since then, um, it's been a wild ride. Uh, I had to do pretty much everything from top to bottom to bring it to uh, what it is right now. So uh, it's uh, it's an auto diesel, 1HDT 1991 Land Cruiser. Excellent. Okay, cool. So we're looking forward to getting into this because I know he's done a whole lot to this. I've personally seen this vehicle and ridden in it. So let's uh, not waste too much time because I'm sure everyone is eager to get into it. So let's get down to what we'll do uh, is to start from the front and sort of work our way around it, right? So let's go and uh, take a look at your front bar work and please talk us through it. So it is a uh, ARB front bull bar winch compatible. Um, it's, uh, I, I believe when it comes to bull bars, I'm, I'm always been a fan of ARB because of the, the space it has in, uh, to actually maneuver things inside there. So, uh, with the bull bar, I have, uh, just basic, uh, 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 driving set of driving lights. And then also this is a, um, it is like an amber light that it actually can be used uh, when you're on a foggy situation or a bit of a heavy rain situation. It, it actually goes from um, um, sort of orange or amber to uh, bright white. And then, but these are just basic your drive, driving lights. This is uh, just the King's brand. Um, and then I have a, a winch, which is, as you can see, uh, it's just sort of in hidden here. That is actually 12,000 uh, pounds King's Winter as well. And um, also I have the GME antenna, 
I have a, uh, for the time being, I have a, a 2.1 dB antenna. It's a GME brand. Um, as you can see here, I put one of these folding brackets, uh, which is, I find it very helpful when, especially when you go through um, drive throughs and all that. Once you have a bigger antenna, a like taller antenna, you can always actually fold it down. And then also when you're at home parked uh, in a garage, it can be folded down, which I find it very, very uh, uh, versatile. I, um, I wanted to actually put this on the roof, uh, which I am planning to do. Um, not sure how it will go because it's foldable. It will still can be uh, under the roof rack. But when, it's, when you're outside, when you're actually on a road, you can have it even higher, which means you'll get a better coverage. Yeah, I think I think on the, on the roof would be the ideal because that's your highest point, isn't it? I, ideally, that is that is correct. Now, I yeah. um, as you can see, this antenna is a bit short because it's only two point one dB. Yeah. But the uh, this uh, this antenna came with two uh, two whips actually. One of them is five point six dB, I believe, and the other one is this. The other one is actually even taller. So assuming if you actually have it on the roof there, it'll yep. be much higher and you'll get a better coverage. Yep, yep. So it, it's one of the, so the two whips, you sort of unscrew it and screw on the one that you want. Is that how it works? That is correct. You, uh, yep. If you see here, there's a little uh, little uh, screw there, which can yep. be unscrewed with a uh, Allen key. Just simply, right. simple, take it off, put the other one in. Right, right. Excellent, excellent. And going back to your lights, you've changed your standard headlights as well, isn't it? Uh, that is correct. So as you can see there, um, they uh, these are not uh, the standard, the stock standard lights that came with it. I've yep. actually put LEDs. The main reason behind it, actually, uh, when you drive at night and uh, all of a sudden when you put your, turn your uh, LED driving lights on, soon as you turn it off, it just... The original lights are sort of yellowish amber, and then you cannot see anything. Yes, you just I simply know. for a few seconds go blind, yeah. and, uh, and, and until you, your eyes actually get used to it. Yeah. So I found it very, very annoying. So I actually thought, okay, you know what? The best thing to do is just have an LED, but yeah. it is not as strong as the driving lights, but it actually yeah. gives you that, uh, the visibility. Yeah, that, that makes it so much easier on the eyes because it goes because when it goes from white to the sort of the yellow amber, your, your eye t eyes take a long time to sort of adjust. But when you have everything in the same sort of uh, color toning, it, it makes it so much easier. I, I know how it feels because my headlights on my 80s is not uh, LED. So <laughs> when I switch between the LEDs and the standard lights, it, it's a world of a difference and it's quite a pain, but uh, yeah. yeah, excellent. So anything else in the front you want to share with us? You got your, you got your, the recovery points, are they standard with your um, bull bar or do you se fit separately? See this, the recovery points that I've, uh, aftermarket recovery points, there's two of them. Right. Okay. Um, I, I usually actually like to put a uh, equalizer bar before I pull anything from here. Like I'm pulling it from the winch. That's a different story. But if somebody yeah. pulling me out, rather than putting into one, uh, one hook i would yep. like to always like to actually put a equalizer bar then it actually i sort of feel like the car is being built from, uh, pulled from both ends rather than yep. sort of twisting it so yep. that's why yeah. i put those in there yeah and it also distributes the the, the force that's being exerted mm -hmm. on it so that's a that's a very good idea excellent let's move on from there to your suspension and wheels and sort of work our way towards the back now b before we get down to the suspension and wheels the uh, snorkel. So, is that a, is that, what brand of snorkel is that? Um, um, is that a... Right. So, it is a safari snorkel. Um, right. I, after searching in the market, and then after talking to all these uh, four wheel drive, you know, gurus in uh, yep. uh, shops, um, I found the safari is the best out of all. And then right. I've uh, had the safari, yeah, the snorkel, and the bull by everything installed together. I have uh, BF Goodrich. Uh, they are uh, 305 70 16s. So that's um, 35, I, 35 inches in, if you talk in inches. Uh, no, it actually comes to about 33s. Okay. Because it's 16 inch uh, uh, wheels. So um, I th there's there's an advantage and a disadvantage of having a 35, sorry, the 
third uh, 16 wheels and the 15 wheels for some yep. but i don't know i i thought i like the 16 wheels because you get the you get a bit of a wall so, um, yep, less yep. wall but it's protected that yep. way for what i've been reading out so the suspension it's pretty much um well wheels are alloy i had a i had the um steel wheels before right um recently i've been actually working on trying to get rid of a lot of weight of the car yep. so i've actually been um, uh, transforming into um, a lighter car and then for do for me to do it i need to get the weight out which means even the rims actually yes. carry a bit of weight so i've been actually changed it and uh, from steel i went to alloy right right okay and uh, what what kind of a uh, uh, offset uh, is do you have on those wheels this is actually 25 offset um right the american racing alloy wheels um right. unfortunately when i bought them i didn't actually have um, uh 22 offset one so i went with 25 uh this is the second set of suspension i actually had initially when after well, the very first set that I put in, it was always been three inch, uh, all man emu shocks, and right. then um, all man emu uh, coil springs. But uh, they, and I really recently I actually changed it to um, I, I kept the I kept the uh, 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 shocks as it is. They're still all man emu, but then I changed it to uh, Dobbins and suspension because right. I needed to put. Uh, 400 constant ones instead of the 300 constant that I had. Okay, so you got 400 constant in the front. Uh, the I got the 100 heavy duty at the front, uh, right. four, three inch, okay. and then the at the back it's a four inch. Um, I, I forget the category, but actually it just drops down to three inch. Right. Okay, I get it. So the the, the travel is a lot more. Compared yes. to the front, yeah, yeah, because I, I've correct, got yeah. I've got the Dobinsons as well as in mine, and they're lovely. There's a lovely suspension kit. No, yeah. yeah, sorry, and uh, when it come when it came to the second set of suspension, actually, I had to do it twice. Um, it it yeah. wasn't a it, it wasn't an error for say um, when I went to Dobbins and uh, they pretty much said let's try it because my yeah. weight wasn't uh, what they thought it would be, so they said let's try a first set. Uh, they've been actually very helpful that way. Let they put. 400 constant range yeah. and then uh, they said run it for about a three weeks come back and then we'll yeah. wait we'll measure the car and then we saw slight drop in at the back so okay. they've been with the second set uh, pretty much uh, free but the only thing i had to do instead of uh, the airbags that i had at the back the suspension yeah. airbags i had yeah. to actually put a new set which is actually compatible with four inch Oh, right. Okay. Okay. So you do have suspension uh, airbags at the back. Airbags at the back. Yes. Right. Okay. Excellent. And it, it, your airbags, can you inflate it and deflate from the inside? Uh, no, that uh, just only outside. Uh, bit of a, um, if I wanted to actually bring all that into inside, yeah. it would have cost me a bit more. So I thought, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a yeah. good exercise to just get back, you know, <laughs> get down and uh, <laughs> rather Makes than just lazy. pushing a button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I would get out, have a couple of beers and then do it in the process. And and, yes. and also the thing is, when the more you add on these things, uh, convenient features, it's convenient, but it adds weight as well. You don't even need an air pump. Uh, like you go to uh, like a proper air pump, you can actually yeah. pump, pump it up with a normal... Uh, push bike air pump. If I'm, if I, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. My okay. girls have, right. a, my girls have normal bikes. They got, yeah. a, I got a normal air pump. I can actually pump the airbags with those as well, yeah. which is easy. Yeah, and it doesn't take a whole lot. So I mean, yeah, that makes no, sense. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. And a, you know, uh, what I have, what I have, sorry, what I have is a sixty pounds, but I only yeah. use it about twelve pounds or fifteen max. Right, right. Okay, yeah, that's cool. And the thing is, once you inflate it, you know, it pretty much stays that way. It's not like you know inflating and deflating your tires depending on the terrain this is a 1991 model yeah uh, the, when it comes to brakes uh, some of the some of the pre 92 models have hub brakes and some of them have disc brakes but this originally right. came with disc brakes yeah however uh, 92 and up models have a bigger disc i believe or bigger pad right. so yeah. the front and the back brake systems all been changed to okay. 91 and up so it's upgraded oh, right. there as well Right. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So there's stopping power. That's, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Uh, stopping power is the 
We do all these mods yes. and get more power out, but that's sort of the last thing we think about. Yeah, so that's sure. cool. Yeah. And also co 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 um, talking about the brakes um, yeah. and the upgrades that you were just talking about, the next yeah. one upgrade I really want to do is the uh, put a, di a dual diaphragm uh, brake booster. Okay. To and the master pump, uh, master cylinder, because I I noticed that because of the weight and the size of the car, it sort of be, no matter how many how good brakes you put in, it just drags a bit. Yeah. So uh, the best I'm gonna try before I upgrade my disc to uh, uh, something else. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try the uh, my mechanic said let's try the uh, the big booster, di booster dual yeah. diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, master cylinder will change that. And yeah. if that actually makes it better, then we'll yeah. change the uh, this. So this is these are Legend X. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, uh, rock crawler. Yeah, um, more like puts uh, step, but then they're actually more more of a rock crawlers than uh, uh, steps. Yeah, um, I like them. I like the design. Um, so I, I try, and then they're very pretty strong actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, strongly built. So I bought them um, again. I had a different set in there, just the basic uh, cheaper set. Then I thought I'll go for these ones because yeah. they built uh, strong. strong, and then also I liked how they fitted onto my car. Yeah, and uh, from from what I can see, uh, so the back back end of it sort of sticks out a little bit more than the front, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. If you it, can it hold is. it from that angle, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, it. yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, those are so useful and to have. It is the only yeah. only downside I would say uh, with the rock crawlers. You got to be very careful when you put your feet here on a slippery yeah. day, especially not like oh, a yeah. step, proper yeah. step. You don't have much space to put the feet in there. Yeah. So uh, I sort of keep um, reminding whoever gets up, you know, be careful when you step in because if you slip it, then you miss some kind of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Yourself. yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's something to be mindful of. Yeah. Roof rack, it is a, a full length um, aluminium roof rack uh, built from OCAM 4x4. Um, I, as I said before, I was trying to actually reduce a lot of weight from the car. So initially I had a steel roof rack and I needed, right. uh, one time I had to take the roof rack off, I needed four people, <laughs> four people <laughs> actually to take it from the car, reduce the air down, bring the car down, take the roof rack. So then I thought, <laughs> no, this is not working out. And yeah. then, so uh, I know it's a double the cost, but I still went for the uh, uh, roof rack, which is aluminium. And then that can be, I, if I wanted to, I can take it in and out from by myself and it's that light. Yeah, it yeah, makes a whole lot of sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I see you got a light bar up there. Uh, yeah, it is a small, very, uh, I should say, very skinny light bar there. Uh, it is not the best out in the market. I just didn't yeah. want to spend a lot of money uh, because I had uh, the lights at the at, at the, the front. front. Yeah. Yeah. So this is more like a wide angle light, so just to cover the sides pretty much. Yeah. And then if you go to the right side, I kept the shovel. Yeah. Uh, there, and then I also have two, two smaller LED lights, which um, I can use when I'm actually camping. Um, it uh, it is actually connected to the second battery, right? And then also, I've actually had uh, some use uh, while I'm driving. If I'm actually on a uh, in a in a countryside or something driving, and if you cannot see anything whatsoever, I usually turn them on. Even the kids right. actually like to see the outside at the dark yeah. when you have the turn lights turned on a bit. Yeah, and it sort of gives a very uh, bright feeling uh, for the cars at the back they pretty much feel safe because they can see the sides of the road yeah yeah that makes sense especially with the end convoy so you can switch those lights on from your cab that is correct yes all right okay yeah that's the mistake i made because mine i have to go to the back to switch it on which which works fine when you're at a campsite but if you want to switch it on while traveling then it's a bit of a mission uh, two on okay. the each side all the way around so i got six uh two on this side two on the other side Two at the right. back and the one uh, one big light at the front. Right. Okay. So front. That, yeah, that lights up quite nicely all around. And then you got the awning on the other side, right? Yes, Quite I've um, got the awning on. The, I'll go to the other side, and I got the awning on the other side. Uh, just the um, King's brand, um, yep. and then also I got the as I said, I got the two lights there. Two lights. Yeah. Uh, and then if I go to the back, that's just the two lights there. 
Okay, that excellent. actually help uh, when you when you especially the two lights at the back. It's pretty helpful when you're reversing in the yeah. uh, in a dark, you know, in the dark. I went um, with a, a, a rear bar. Now okay. I had the option of putting a rear bar with either two spare wheel carriers or if not uh, one wheel and a, two jerry can holders. It yep. is uh, built by uh, Rasla Engineering. Okay. Um, I've actually had a pretty, you know, I've, I've looked around for a lot of bars actually. This is the one I actually liked because it fits nice with the car. And then uh, I liked how I like to deal with them because they're very helpful when it came to actually giving me information and you know showing me around. And it, it, so I thought it will be the best, best, best way to do. Yep. Uh, but I've been I have had that for such a long time now, and then I've um, really like it. So as you yeah, can it, see, I put two jerry cans in there with the tap. Yep. Whenever you go somewhere, you can just simply fill it, fill it with water, or if you want fuel, uh, in my case, I always fill it with water, and yep. then it's easy easy access there. Yeah, yeah, and, and I like that bar because it's it seems where it, it like you said it kind of fits into the vehicle quite nicely without looking out of place. It is. That is correct. Yeah. It's uh, it's really it's really it's sort of a looks like part of the car rather than you don't feel that it is from um, it is an additional part to the car. It just fits yeah. really nice. Yeah, it is. It is, and and that's that's and those two round lights, those are reverse lights, or can you switch them yes. on independently? No, they are only actually uh, reverse lights. Uh, it comes up when you put the reverse gear. Right. Okay. Um, and then also. Actually, these lights there that came with the bar as well. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Lights as well. Oh, okay, okay. But okay. can you those two lights up there? Can you switch it on independently if you wanted to? No, not really. I they they asked me if I wanted a uh, special uh, like a, a separate switch for it. Yeah. I I said not to worry about it because because I was gonna have those two lights up there on the roof rack. I never yeah. had a need for another yeah. light to be turned on with the switch, and it would have cost me extra about hundred bucks or something just to do rewiring and all that. Yeah, and I yeah. said, "Don't worry about it." Yeah, that's true. I mean, you got two up there; it makes sense. That is correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. When I was talking to you about the uh, airbag, so yeah. my uh, the oh, airbag right. actually been uh, the, the the two uh, nipples are there, so you can actually. Oh uh, yeah. That's where I pump the air into the rear uh, airbags. This is a very newest addition, which can be just, you know, take off, take on. Uh, my kids uh, like to ride bikes and they get stuck uh, after riding yeah. so long and they say, come and pick me up. So I just got, I just put this, uh, it's only a small uh, unit, you know, yeah. it's not a state yeah. of the art bike rack. It's something yeah, but, to, uh, but sometimes if you go to a, some, a camping area where you can do a bit of cycling, you can take the, if you're not towing. Is, uh, yes. Um, yeah. Even, even if I'm towing, I can still have it. It's just that I need to change the type of the, oh. uh, uh, the extender uh, that yep. I actually had to put in. There are extenders. You can have the bike rack and also have the tow ball together. That right. way you okay. can actually tow them as well. As, as you know, I'm too lazy. I don't ride bicycles. I just drive. So <laughs> I know nothing about these things. <laughs> no, I'm I'm the same. I don't like riding. It's just that when the kids uh, kids want to ride, I just carry them yeah. and then you know keep it there. I don't I only take two bikes, not three. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes when friends tell me, "Hey, how about going for a ride?" I say, "Well, that's why they invented cars. The swing arm has got a strut." It is. That is right. Yeah. 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 Um, that is. Yeah. That's very helpful, actually. Um, it's uh, if you didn't have that, then they would, this would be just you know swinging swagging back. everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have the two draw uh, kings two drawer system at the back yep. with the wings on them, so I'll yep. keep pretty much all the small accessories, uh, uh, patch kits, uh, uh, things like like the hoses and everything in these wings under there. Yeah. Yep. Um, on the both sides, and um, the drawers pretty much depending on the situation, depending on the trip, I just put whatever I can carry inside the drawers. Yeah. Um, I have the 60 liter fridge. Uh, I used to have until about six months ago. I used to actually have a 45 liter. Yeah. Fridge. Then uh, I thought I had uh, run into situations where it wasn't enough for me yep. because I mainly uh, travel with the bigger group, so uh, yep. everyone needed to carry a bit more. So I thought I'll get the 
60 liter fridge there and uh, msa 50 60 40 liter cage all oh, right okay i get it so that that's not a drop down it's just the cage it is no not it's not a drop down it is just yeah. a cage and i thought about the drop down um, they yeah. weigh so much that unit yeah. um it just it's you know, I mean, it, I didn't want to have that extra 10 or 15 kilos in there. Because yeah. as, as, as I was saying earlier, I wanted to cut down all the weight. So I'm actually, I didn't want to exactly. go for the drop down at all. And they take up a fair bit of space also, you know, which is unnecessary. That is correct. Yeah, that is yeah. very true. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have two s slide outs or just the one for the fridge? Uh, just the one for the fridge. Um, okay. Got a new, very new addition. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. What I was yeah, this is what I was actually talking to about uh, last week. Yeah, um, you, yeah, he, I knew. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, he, I haven't seen this thing. I haven't seen it's a very brand new accessory that is installed. So I'm seeing it for the first time with everybody else. Yeah, go for it. Show me. Yeah, it, it's um, when it comes to the accessory, it is not a new accessory in the market. It's been there for a while. I've been thinking yeah. for about three years actually whether I need to put that in or not. But yeah. one of my friends actually very recently bought the same car and then he went for it. And yeah. then um, yeah. I thought once he put it in, I thought, oh, yeah, well, I should have gone a long time ago. <laughs> so this is called. So I, what I did, this is actually, as you know, at the this door there, there's a lot of space inside yeah. and it's just sure. a wasted space. So this is the hurricane um, um, the barn. I honestly can't remember what they exactly call it. But yep. it's just another cover that goes on top of the the door. So right. you've got two locks in there. Just got to unhook. Yep. And then you just put there. Voila, oh, wow, there's nice. all your recovery gears. Yeah, okay. Now, And it's now, very simple I I uh, installation. You just got to cut around. Yeah. And then just pile a bit where the sharp edges. And then uh, put this in. And then it. I'll, I did it in what? One hour or maximum wow, two yeah. hours. Fantastic. Yeah, easy, and, easy. and that and that's got like a tub, isn't it? I mean, it, it, where you load all the stuff. That is correct. So yeah. Uh, before before how how it's all. If you check yours, you got the flat bed there. Um, yeah. Just a just a. You can sit on it. You can you know put your whatever you take it out from there. You can put on it. It can carry a bit of weight. Yep. But this one, this one does the same thing. You pretty much can, you know, I can, if you want to, I can just, you know, sit, uh, stand up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, to whole, the entire top portion where you got all the carpeting, this, is that all supplied with the unit? Uh, that is correct, yeah. Um, yeah this, okay. uh, they have two models, one with the marine carpet on it and the other yeah. one just the metal. So I went with the uh, marine carpet. I thought it looked a bit nicer than the uh, other one. Yeah, yeah. I went with this one. Yeah. Now, just for the interest of everybody else, when you said the other option is metal, is that stainless steel metal or just? Uh, just um, it wasn't stainless steel. I think it's powder coated black, just metal. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Because what I was thinking was, if it was stainless steel or like a food grade stainless steel, pe uh, people could use it for you know cutting and chopping stuff if they were prepping food. Ah, that is true. That is yeah, actually yeah. yes, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a good idea too. But then, yeah. um, I wasn't gonna let anybody cut anything on my <laughs> so <laughs> I just went into Moran carpet, which is. Yeah. Um, but but that the that's best very thing is yeah yeah, yeah go. Sorry. no I said that's very neat because it almost kind of blends in with your drawers. That is hundred. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. yeah. And the best thing is now I have a le one less bag. Of yeah. recovery gears to carry inside uh, inside the car. Yes, exactly. And then the, the wasted space have been used, utilized yeah. for something, you know, something else. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? When we go touring, um, I mean, there's so much to carry, especially if you've got a family uh, with kids, uh, and space is your biggest, uh, you know, limiting factor. So trying to utilize all this wasted space is an excellent idea. So yeah, that's something that's gone into my uh, list of things. So uh, accessories that you need to fit onto your phobi never ends. You know, it just, keep, it just keeps piling no, up. No, they just keep piling up, <laughs> keep piling up. Uh, <laughs> but um, um, going, back to the, going back to the original issue of weight, um, yeah. I don't think I've added extra weight at all. 
maybe yeah. maybe slightly about one kilo. Yeah. Because you take something out, uh, you cut the inside of the uh, uh, some portion of the tail. Yeah. A gate, and then you put this. So you pretty much take some weight out, put this one in. So you haven't actually gained any weight at all. No, no, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that, uh, yes. No weight yeah. at all. That's an excellent idea. I love that. Love that. Um, in fact, um, I've been mentioning this to a few other friends and some other subscribers, and, and I'm sure they'll love to see this. So excellent. Under the wings uh, of the um, uh, the drawer system, there's, again, a few uh, accessories that I carry, uh, like any any spare parts, I should say. Yeah. And then, uh, so it's under there hidden, and then on top, I just put some uh, four chairs in there. And yep. then whatever I can put in here when it when it comes to uh, camping trips, uh, you know, when you have to carry a lot of stuff, just put in yep. there. Okay, so. there you go. Excellent. Oh, that's that's so much easier, isn't it, to get into? Yeah, de depending on how your loading pattern is, that's so much easier. You can just put your hand in and get whatever you want. That is correct. Now, yeah. um, right now, I don't have a lot of stuff at the back. Yeah. But when you do have, once yeah. you put the bags or whatnot. Any small space, actually, it's very valuable. So yeah. rather than having to go through pulling out all the bags, anything that's already been packed yeah. from the back, because of these dolphins, you can pretty much simply open it, go to yeah. the go to whatever the item that you need straight, rather than yeah. having to pull everything out of the car. Exactly, yeah. I mean, th this is pretty similar to having a ute with the custom canopy where you can open on the sides. And, and I, I that's think that's correct. one of the reasons why utes are more popular than the wagons because of the, that accessibility. Um, but yeah, this is such a... And you got two on either side, so you got all three access. Yes, um, that, is, that is true. I, I had the option of going for a one, Yeah. but then I thought, hey, what the hell, I'll just go for the both of them, you know? <laughs> And uh, but I, I made the right decision, I should yeah, say, because yeah. um, one side I always because of the fridge uh, cage there, yeah, and the, I have very limited access to this side, yeah. So I'm glad that I put both sides, uh, both gullwings in there. Now uh, I can simply just chuck everything in here yeah, on this yeah. side by opening this gullwin, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, acts there. It's, it's more than uh, it's. I put it there because I like it, you know. It's <laughs> and I it, never I've had probably used once or twice. Yeah. But other than that, I just always taste that it looks sort of looks nice. <laughs> and it's it's a perfect place for something that you don't access all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll start uh, from the rear seats. Yeah, uh, yeah. pretty much I have I haven't done much to the back. Yeah. There's nothing you could do. The only thing I've done is I put one of these uh nets. storage. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, on top of the store, on top of the net, it uh, usually the pillows or if not uh, blankets, things like that yeah. goes in there. It cannot, yeah. it cannot hold a lot of weight, but yeah. pillows and bed sheets, blankets, it perfectly sits there, and then yeah. um, um, it's space. You know, it saves a lot of space from uh, oh, inside yeah. this area For there. Sure. Yeah. Otherwise, we keep piling stuff on the on the back seat. And uh, in, in your case, you got the kids, so you can't do that as well. And that's a perfect that place is for correct. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. And um, I have these, uh, also I put these um, headrests, I should say, yeah. these blue ones. Uh, they yeah. came in different colors, but only at the time, the only one that was available is blue. So I <laughs> went with it just yeah. before a trip. Yeah. So uh, they pretty much can be lifted up. Or oh, nice. Put it down, both of them. These actually have these are the most, uh, you know, this is actually a very good item for kids when they're actually especially sleeping. So their head yeah. doesn't fall back and forth. I mean, sorry, yeah. sideways. Yeah, yeah. But they still, if I break, then they still come up. Uh, but yeah, yeah. you got the seat belt to protect them. Seat so belt. it's all good. But I mean, even for adults, that's, that's really good because on a long trip, sometimes you tend to doze it off. Is. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, now that you talked about the adults, actually, I wanted. I now I remember. I, I always and I wanted the uh, extra pair of these to actually go into the passenger side. Yeah. For uh, especially uh, for a front passenger to just you know rest their head, but um, I I think I should get that pretty soon yeah. before the next trip. No, so that that hooks onto your headrest, is it? How does it mount? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it got these two hooks there. 
Um, right. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, can you see them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it yeah. just um, you just put the whole thing against the seat, and then you got a hook that hooks onto uh, the headrest, and you just yeah. gotta tighten these things uh, to uh, with two oh, knots. Right. That's it. So that's easy. And I see uh, for the kids, you've got the the LCD screens, isn't it, for watching movies um, and that stuff. Is, that is correct. So um, I got the uh, front and the front unit, uh, yeah. two doubled in unit, and then also the Alpine uh, the DVD system there. Yeah. Uh, about when I got it, but that was about two, two or four years ago, I got them. Uh, yeah. At the time, my kids were a bit smaller. And yeah. they use that a lot. Yeah. Now, because the iPad and everything, <laughs> that unit actually sort of has become obsolete. Nobody uses them because uh, two kids, uh, because they got a, a three-year gap, they have yeah, a yeah. different yeah, interest on, on movies. Yeah. So they actually yeah. keep watching the iPad rather than putting <laughs> watching a one movie there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put uh, one of these um, uh, fire extinguishers. Actually, they are not just sitting there. They are on a bracket. Yeah. Um, the two, it, it mounted onto the actual uh, bolts on the seat. Yes. And yeah. then this is, this just hooks onto there. Yeah. Those are so good because you don't have to drill holes, nothing. You just use, use what's already available. Yeah. UHF radio, right? I put it in there. It's, um, it's sort of a, a space that never gets used. So I have the uh, compressor and the yeah. rear and front lockers there. Right. Um, okay. And the switches are, I, I put in there. That's the best. I thought that yeah. would be the best place to put it in. Um, and then if you go further a bit, as you can see, you got, um, I put these in, I had put these in, um, just a light. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the char phone chargers and then also yeah. the second battery indicator. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dual battery indicator. And then all the switches are there at the front. Okay. Okay, so, and, and, and have you got a few blank ones as well in case you want to add something in the future? Just one blank one. Okay, so okay. if I, if I, can you see this? Oh. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you got the, the roof light, driving lights, rear lights, and the additional uh, uh, light via the front. Right. So all that uh, to the front. And then this is yeah. left, right, rear. And then uh, oh, right. um, this is the blank okay. one. Uh, and, and I can see you got your Alpine head unit. Yeah, it got GPS, uh, you know, just a basic uh, Alpine okay. unit, which, which has GPS and uh, all the other yeah. stuff in there. That's a DVD, no. uh, plug in a USB. Uh, but the yeah. USB on this system, the, the USB, I've actually run a wire inside the cabin, uh, inside the uh, cubby hole, and the, you yeah. have to put, put the uh, USB in there. Right, right. Yeah, that's easier. Now, does that have Apple CarPlay and Android? No, no, not this one. Um, uh, this is, uh, I just had the basic unit. Uh, but right. then I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if I wanted to change it, I guess I would change it to one of those yeah. uh, pretty uh, fancy ones later on. Yeah, I guess the only advantage, the main advantage, of course, you'd be able to play music and stuff from your phone. And then also you could probably have your maps on there through the phone. Uh, true, that is correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's pretty much the EGT and the Bruce right, okay. controller. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that's neat as well. I I just put one of these. Uh, these are actually for uh, bike holders. Um, right. The cup holders for the bikes. I got one of those oh. and I put in there. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Actually, that's very clever. Yeah, I should I should get one of those because um, yeah, for the there's so many. Um, yeah, there's so many different types of these. Um, yeah. I, I have two different types, one on the other kind, one in this one, but uh, it's easy to install. You just got to put a rubber in there and then uh, because yeah. you don't want to damage the actual uh, trim of it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just, um, hook it up, it's easier. And it, uh, it yeah. again, um, unused space uh, being utilized. Yeah. Okay, tell can us you what you've done. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that beautiful big uh, intercooler right in front of... <laughs> that's that's the most yes. striking part of the... As you open the motor, that's... That's a let, let, okay. You start wherever you want to start, and then talk us through it. Um, as you can see, not a lot of space inside. Um, yeah. uh, one of my friends just bought one of these, as I mentioned earlier, and I went and looked at his, and he had so much space, and I was wondering, <laughs> whoa, that you can put another engine in there <laughs> if you wanted to. That's much space. Yeah. But uh, I've put 
pretty uh, uh, a lot of stuff in here. Um, so dual battery system, obviously. Uh, yeah. Second battery is here. Um, I got my boost ga boost gauge um, okay. right there. Fuse box for all the lighting. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, all the wiring actually harness it and go through here. So it, this is more like the center of all the wiring. So if right, something yeah. were to go wrong, uh, all the relays are here for all the lighting. Yeah. And then the switch switchboard is here, pretty much the fuse box is here. So if a light goes wrong, something goes wrong, the first thing, first place I need to come is here and then check yeah. all the fuses and then uh, follow it through and see where the problem is. And I have, I've installed, obviously everyone as usual, you know, should be installing uh, the uh, catch, catch can. can there. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so this is the ARB pump that actually uh, helps oh, yeah. me with the air lockers. Yeah. Uh, air lockers, and then also uh, uh, this is, you know, to pump your tires up and down. Yep. Or, I mean, yep. pump, pump your tires once you actually take an uh, air off. And then this is uh, something very different. Um, I don't think a lot of people have seen this. No. This is actually my um, breathers. Oh, so right. Okay. I've, so all the four transmission diffs, everything, it's connected into a one line, two lines, and then yeah. it's actually hooked on to these little filters. So in, in like in my case, I've got something similar, but not exactly that. So one is for the rear diff, the diff breather. One is for yeah. the front diff. And uh, in the 80s, for the transmission... The breather actually goes into where the um, the uh, transmission oil dipstick is. Right. Okay. So what I so what I basically did was I I did exactly what you did. I, you I got two there like for the two diffs, but the one for the transmission I just left it as it is because it's already in a pretty right. secure place. But putting yeah. the filters is a good idea because again, what you don't want is it's sucking dust into the into the uh, moving part. So that's a, that's that a cool true, idea. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've uh, put a second fuel filter in there. I've yep. asked so many people. Um, uh, th this is not something designed for the 80 series. There's, I couldn't okay. find anything that designed for the second fuel filters designed for 80 series. Okay. Um, I've asked around and then nobody seems to be making them. Plus everyone said the 80 series don't need them. <laughs> All right. Okay. And um, yeah, they're, they're everyone, every specialized uh, mechanic on, on these special parts, they kept saying you don't need anything for 80 series because yeah. they, they got a good filter already and then uh, nobody seems to be putting them in. So you don't need them. Yeah. But I searched around, asked around, and then I found uh, this particular Ryko filter there that actually yeah. fit, can be fitted onto mine. So I put it anyway in case, you know, yeah. never yeah. say no, never. No harm. Yeah, exactly. No, no harm done at all. Yeah. So the next big item, it's the yeah. uh, cross country intercooler there. Yeah. And if you can remember, we actually went yeah. to the cross country manufacturer and then actually looked at it, and that's where we ordered it when I was yeah. in South Australia. Yeah, because um, they're, they're all, all the way here in Adelaide. Yes, I can remember that. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's pretty simple setup. Uh, yeah. In, when it comes to what what goes in the in, inside the engine bay, but the only thing is I had to uh, cut the Cut oh, yeah. the section of the, the bonnet scoop, bonnet, and then the scoop. The scoop in there. Yeah, and that because it's the size of the uh, intercooler, uh, the bonnet yeah. scoop actually became really big. Yeah, but, but it I, looks nice. I like it anyway. It looks it is. nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and, um, and I use... actually had this new padding actually put in later on. This is custom made. Yeah. Um, uh, my mechanic actually, Southern Southern um, Auto Repairs, actually, he actually had this made from a guy that he knows. That's oh, pretty, nice. pretty nice. Yeah. It's better yeah, than nice. the what I had originally on there. Yeah. Yeah. Like the one I've got, it, it's showing its age. Maybe I should get one done as well. And and yeah. uh, you, you said you got fans uh, underneath the for the intercooler. That is correct. Um, there yeah. is a, um, I mean, it's not something I've designed. Uh, yeah. These intercoolers do come up with, come with a fan that goes yeah. underneath the intercooler. Right. Um, there were two options. Either you can, I, I had the option of connecting it to the main switch. So soon as I turn the engine, the fan goes on, fan turns yeah. on. But then um, after discussing with uh, my mechanic and he said, let's put a switch in there. 
Yeah. You can pretty much have the switch on all the time, yeah. which means when you turn the ignition on, the fan goes on. Yeah. But yeah. you don't need that fan until unless you're running a very hot uh, air yeah. through it. So yeah, I mean, why, why waste that, the fan? It on. Yeah, it is, just yeah. have the dis discipline to switch it on. That's that's all that's you need. Right. Yeah. Yes. And um, last thing about the engine, it has been completely rebuilt. Uh, yes, you know that. the full story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If I were to tell the story, I, I don't think we have enough time, but long, no. long story short, <laughs> um, I had the engine rebuilt, yeah. which I only can say, and I don't know why I had the problem, but uh, yeah. you know, I bought it about the car second hand, so yeah. um, any, like, I don't know how the previous owner used it, yeah. but right now, this is a brand new, brand new Perfect. car. Yeah, it'll last you another lifetime. Um, it is. Have you done anything to the turbo or is it standard? Uh, no. Uh, so when I got the engine done, um, I had the turbo upgraded. Yeah. Uh, and then also uh, I've updated, upgraded the pump, injectors, everything. So right. okay. Uh, okay. I've uh, I made a mistake uh, doing the pump twice because yeah. of the engine issue I had. Uh, yeah. But then right now, uh, finally, I got everything sort of corrected and uh, pumped injectors, uh, turbo, everything, uh, matching each other's power. So right. we're going with each power. That Just wanted to say, yeah, I've, I've, I've done all the mods. Uh, initially, uh, there's a, a mechanic, uh, Bidder's four-wheel drive actually did all the work for me. Yeah. Um, and then um, after that, I've uh, gone to uh, Southern Auto Repair. He's in Dandenong. He actually was a friend of mine. So yeah. Um, we I have the sort of a freedom of talking to him before we do things, so it, yeah. it gives me a bit um, leniency to talk about what we're going to do, the pros and cons. Uh, we yeah. can sit down and talk about before yeah. we do it, rather than jump into conclusions. Say, oh, look, let's get this done. So I like yeah, that idea. So we just sort of talk for uh, several minutes and find out what's best, what's not best, and the yeah. pros and cons before I put another item in there. That's very important, isn't it? Because then you don't rush into anything. You make an informed decision on what you're going to do. So that's, that's excellent. True. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, when you when it comes something, if I have learned from all this stuff, uh, best best thing to do if you want something put in the car. Yeah. Before you put it, yeah. sleep on it for a few days, yeah. and then decide. Because yeah. once you put in. But soon as you drive around and if you see something else, you want yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> right? I know. So you gotta, you gotta find the perfect one for your car that yeah. touches you. But yeah. if you rush it, you'll end up making the bad decision. Absolutely, I guess yeah. It's, it's the same way with everything in your life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't get emotionally caught up. That's that's what I say. Now, while we're at it, uh, we're almost there. What future mods have you got in mind? I, mean, I know it's a, it's a never-ending story. Um, I, but is, if, I, if I was to ask you, what are the, the two, two next mods that you would like to get done? What would you say? Um, not major mods that I want to do. I mean, it's pretty yeah. much completed. Yeah. The only yeah. thing I want to do is the, take this antenna or put yeah. an additional antenna onto the on roof. The roof. Yeah. Or if not, there is something called a uh, uh, reception booster. Or, um, uh, it, it actually um, boosts the reception of your phone a bit. So I want to put okay. one of those units up there as well. We, yeah. I already have the unit. I just yeah. never had the chance to put that in. But that antenna will definitely go on the roof. Right, right. Okay, cool. Yeah, excellent. And uh, yeah. other than that, I don't think there's enough space to do anything else in yeah. here. <laughs> well, maybe what you can do, and this is something I'm thinking of, maybe you can put a 270 awning. <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah, they can be a bit heavy one, though. Yeah, it, that's the only thing. Remember when we yeah. uh, went to uh, one of the shops the, yeah. back some time ago and when we actually lifted up and it's yeah. too heavy. It is and heavy, And this yeah. being an aluminium roof rack and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, I, I don't see the need for that at yeah. this time. And then I don't want to put more weight onto the car because yeah. I'm trying to cut down all the weight. Well, that's the thing because it's a bit of a compromise because on one hand it's it's a very good thing to have, but then again yeah. you're putting about twenty five to thirty kilos on your roof on the side. That is correct, which is also not ideal. Yeah, it makes sense, but uh, yeah, look, you got a, you got pretty much what you need. You you don't need anything else. You just need to travel. No, that is true. <laughs> I just need to find the time to travel. That is yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that makes all of us. <laughs> all right. So before we wrap it all up. 
Now, obviously, you've done a fair bit of traveling, which I personally know. What are, if I was to ask you your top two uh, most memorable camping trips in, in Australia, which ones would that be? Um, yeah, first thing, first one, uh, out, of, out of so many camp trips that I've done, the very first one, uh, uh, 10 out of 10 would go to uh, Simpson Camp. Yes, Simpson yeah, uh, we did, Desert. We, we did that together. We did it yeah, together. Lo- loved yes, it, loved yeah, it. Yeah. Love it. And then I, I still, to the date, I regret the fact that we had to come a bit early. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm still planning to actually arrange another trip. It's not easy because we have other yeah. plan, trips planned. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, you know, you need a you need a one few days, like two weeks at least, you yeah, know, yeah. for the trip. So uh, I want to go back there again and then spend a yeah. bit more time in the desert rather than yeah. just last time we spent four four days. Now this four time days, I want to yeah. spend at least about six, yeah. seven yeah. nights in the ca- in the desert. That's the, that, just for the benefit of the viewers, because we did that back in 2017. And the biggest, uh, I, I ran, uh, went shotgun in, in the 80 with uh, Hustler. And my biggest regret was I wasn't doing YouTube videos back then. I wish I had filmed. I just have photos, which are still real good. But I, I love that trip. And I think we should do a, a, a reunion trip one more time. <laughs> That's that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, Anytime. Yeah. Count me in. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the uh, second one is the uh, Fraser Island. Uh, very yeah. first time we went to Fraser Island. I've been to Fraser Island twice. Uh, yeah. We were planning on going on, uh, actually we are planning on going next uh, January as well, if yeah. borders are open. Yeah. But uh, the, the very first time we went out there, we've camped. That's the second one, the second best camping uh, trip, I guess I should uh, yeah. say. Yeah, on the Fraser, you, you can never go wrong with Fraser, isn't it? I mean, it's a totally different no, the, experience. It is. It is a totally different experience. The weather is good. Uh, there was five families with us. Uh, it was in a, a, a fenced camping area because we had yeah. little ones because of the yeah. dingo uh, problem. We, we actually booked in a fenced camp area. And then we luckily, we had the whole camp to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, there were nice two gentlemen, uh, the rangers. They were good enough, actually. They were nice enough for us to have the whole campsite to ourselves and not book anybody into it because yeah, I guess nice. there were a lot of people at that time when we went there. Yeah. And we enjoyed that a lot. Well, I think uh, we've come to the end of it. It was a very comprehensive. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, and uh, if anyone's got questions uh, for Hustler, leave them in the comments below. Uh, and I'm sure he'll come back to the channel and answer those questions. Um, and if you've got more specific questions, head on over to the forum, which is on overland-journals.com. Join the forum and you can ask questions there as well. Well, thank you. It's nice chatting in a weird way because we always talk uh, other things over the phone <laughs> in the day. But uh, thanks for coming on board and sharing the for the 80, which I love talking about. No, no, that's all good. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I like to share my story at the at the yeah. same time as you go along with these uh, other stories as well. I guess yeah. everyone learn from everyone. Um, yes. What yeah. to do, what not to do, uh, especially yeah. what not to do. And everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody seems to want to do everything, but it's the best way. But the best yeah. question is what not to do. You not know? to do. What yeah, unnecessary absolutely. things is exactly. Yeah. I was talking to another f- friend of mine. He's just bought himself a, a four by four, and he's going through the process, and he's getting all emotional. And excited. And I told him, you know, I think the better way to do it, if I was to give advice, the best would be first buy all the accessories that you want and then think what vehicle is going to take them all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, thanks so much. It's It's been great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, rig rundown, the 80 series. There was lots to talk about. So that was uh, really cool. I enjoyed doing that. And uh, if you'd like to get your four be featured, well, write to me, Duncan at overlandjournals.com. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscription button. And uh, I'll see you again in another video in a, in a week's time.